Hey everyone, it's Ant, Martin and Nathan from Referees The Final Whistle Podcast. Now thanks to our sponsor, FindMyKit.com, we've got a fantastic giveaway prize for you. It's a signed Lionel Messi picture. Framed, authenticated, the works. So thanks to FindMyKit.com, you can win it. All you need to do is get yourself over to Twitter, tag at FindMyKit and also comment the word that you're about to see at the end of this clip that we filmed with Mark Clattenburg. Good luck. When we're talking about the, the big games like that, and obviously, look, you know, my concern is with sort of the well-being and, and mental toughness and resilience around refereeing. Um, obviously, I like probably many who are listening to this and, and watching this. I read your recent piece, or, or a recent piece, certainly, about some of the things you'd said in relation to some of the, the big games you'd had and about the pressure that social media had, had kind of put on you around that time and how ultimately it led to you not being able to have memories of of sort of the play during the, the big games, certainly in 2016, where you had that series of, of great finals that you got appointed to successively. I just, I, what I kind of wanted to ask about that was, what, what do you, what, what do you feel that you would have done differently now when you took, when you obviously you talk about those nerves traveling and things like that, what do you think you'd have been able to do differently to, to sort of actually now be able to have the memories? I think, I think that it's always good afterwards because you can analyze and you can possibly enjoy it a lot more now that I've finished referee and it's it gives you a chance to reflect and it is a sadness that when you're involved in it the pressures are so so big and I've said this many times before the modern day referee unfortunately is under more pressure than they've ever been um if you think back to when possibly the Premier League when I first got on the Premier League 15 years ago um, we didn't have spider cams, we didn't have Ultra HD, we didn't have uh, 40 cameras at every game. Um, so, um, yes, it has its advantages that if you make a decision that nobody believes, that you hope that a camera can pick it up. But the, the, the way modern football is now, you've got cameras that referees will never, ever get that viewing angle and most of the time it's behind the goal and unfortunately referees never get that camera angle and it becomes very very difficult uh, the pace of the game's got a lot faster um, but it is with sadness because um, you know the pressures when when I first started refereeing was enjoyable um, yes it was a profession but it wasn't as serious as it is now I think um, the financial side of it's gone up Therefore, the responsibilities and if ever, everyone involved in football becomes higher, including referees and um, the fitness levels went up. Um, you know, and the social media side was zero. So therefore, you know, if you knew you had had a good game, I used to, because I, I used to always laugh at this, I used to get a mark in the newspaper on a Monday. And I used to think, yes, I used to turn the paper upside down. So I got a nine instead of a six. <laughs> Things like that. And that was the only way you knew through a journalist if you, you had a half decent game, if you got a seven or eight, and you think, oh, that, that's all right. Or you didn't get criticized in the newspaper. And now, and that newspaper disappeared. It disappeared at Whitby Beach, you know, and with the fish and chips. So therefore, it was gone. Um, but now, with the way the, the web and social media got developed, there's no hiding place and it stays in, it stays there forever. So your family can read it. Um, and it become really, really difficult to deal with. Um, and when you have good games, um, it's really easy, but you're still getting criticised. Even if you make the decision correct, you're upsetting one team or the other. Um, and there's just so many keyboard warriors that um, if if you read it, and unfortunately, everybody likes to have a peek because everybody wants praise, um, especially in refereeing because it's a soulless task. You know, you don't get very much praise. So you, 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 you're searching for praise, but then um, 99% of it is, is just vile trolling and uh, you haven't to deal with that um, because there's so much negativity. When you get older, you deal with it a bit easier because you get a bit more experience and you, you become a little bit more more relaxed about it. But when, you, when you're pushing yourself to try and be the best you can be, um, you know, you just... You, you just get trolled over the, the smallest things and, um, you know, and, and some death threats when you, when you make a decision that you, you think is even right. 
Um, and even over the Oban McKell incident, um, well, it was accused of being a racist still. People still believe it's true. And because Chelsea accused us, the football fans of Chelsea will still believe it, even though I think everybody knows it's, it was completely false. And, you know, the, things always live with you. So you have to deal with it. And, you know, the psychologists on board now in, in the PGM world could they do more? Of course they could. Um, because it's not just the Premier League and the top referees that need it. It's, 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 it's some of the guys below and uh, how um, some even grassroots referees can deal with the abuse that they take because I've been involved in, in just for example, it was about three, four years ago, I did a, I did a game for, no, probably a little bit longer, maybe five years ago, I did a game for a, one of my friends in Sunderland and it was a youth match. <laughs> And some of the abuse I was taking, I just put my whistle down. It was a black one, of course. And I just put it down, <laughs> put it down on the side of the pitch. And the guy who was giving us abuse, I said, go on the map, you do it, I'm off. I'm not getting paid for this, I'm doing it as a favour. I just refereed a big game in, a, in the Premier League. And I just started walking off. And it had, to be fair, everybody ganged up on the guy and told him to leave. You know, and, But I'm thinking, what about this guy who's a young referee who hasn't got the skill sets to be able to deal with it like me? Mm. Um now, the abuse was just un unreal and you think but most of the parents you know they, they, they want something for their for their sons and daughters that they weren't so therefore they shout and scream at the sons the other teams the referees and it's just frustration and it's a society issue and unfortunately you're never going to change it because there's so much jealousy um, and people still abuse me now for having me tattoos having a car having a nice house you know, having nice clothes, or oh, Mark Glattenberg's got hair, you know, he, he's, he, you know, he shouldn't have, he's a referee. What is it? Somebody tell me, what is a modern, what is a referee? What is a referee supposed to look like? You know, people have a stereotypical image of a referee, yeah? <laughs> with a beard and you weren't allowed a beard, with, you're certainly not allowed a beard, you weren't allowed a beard. And <laughs> no, that's true, not under the Ellery regime. But you two, beard and tattoos, God, you get nowhere, you two now. You know, I got my, I got reported of David Ellery for having a for having a beard, so you would have no chance. Rock and roll referees. That's what Rock we and are. Roll referees. <laughs> Somebody explain to me what is a what is a what is a referee? You know, what because I dress or I know. It's, I think it was Rob Jones got criticised recently for yeah. having hairstyle. What's that all about? What's what's that got to do with it? A hairstyle? Who cares? Um, but unfortunately, these trolls. You know, have a, a you know, I'm not allowed to speak. For example, people said to me, "Go, oh, you're a Jody." Well, what are they expect? This is I'm, I live in the northeast. I've lived in the northeast all my life. Do, what do they want us to speak like? Um, but people don't even hear you, um, and they have this perception of you from watching you on TV. And it's like an actor in Coronation Street. They're different to how they are in their work, in their normal lives. You know, I'm dealing with multi-millionaires, and if I try to act like I did with my mates, I wouldn't survive. So I've got to find a way to manage these multi-millionaires and people just have this perception of you on TV that you're arrogant and they can have that perception of us, but I'm one of the least arrogant people you'll meet.